Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we're on site here at Cali County College. I've got Bob Moffat with me, and he's done several programs with us before. He's the uh, head instructor. Normally, we're welding pipe and some pretty heavy structures and things like that. Today, we want to show you kind of the artistic side of uh, what you can learn here at this college. So, Bob, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good to have you. Well, hey, what is this? It's just got the cool factor. It looks good. Pile of brass. It kind of looks like a tree, doesn't it? It does, yes. I learned this from a from an old metallurgist that worked for MG, Messer Gresham Company in, in Wisconsin. Uh, a lot of us salespersons went up and we had to learn their products and everything. One of the exercises that this guy was, was uh, showing was their low fuming bronze or brass alloys. Um, the exercise, I think, is just vital when it comes to oxyacetylene welding, TIG welding, uh, you're manipulating a heat source and a filler wire. So in doing so, why don't we challenge ourselves to do something here? So the trick is you, you clean off a piece of, of carbon steel or any material that you can start out with that needs to be clean uh, and you start melting some brass and you can make your trunk and the, what's, what's cool about this is you have your heat source and you have your filler wire and there's a, there's a liquid and there's a solid, a liquid and a solid, and it's a movement of an eighth of an inch. And if you're good with your filler wire, you can actually stretch this stuff out and you can make, you'll notice, you'll notice that some of these are thin and there's bumps to them and that's, that's us moving and stretching and making this freeze and stuff out here in space. So, you know, the last thing you want to do is like the lay wire technique. You don't want to just <laughs> stick it on there and then melt it off up here. That's cheating. You're not going to do the exercise. Uh, so we want to get this melted right out here on the very tip. And we want to fuse it and we want to pull it and stretch it. And we want to go different directions. So I find it to be a, a really valuable experience as far as learning how to manipulate things. You know, when, when I started welding, I started doing oxyacetylene. Oxyacetylene only. You know, it, it, it looks like uh, you've got what, a number? It's a, it's a double lot tip. Double lot tip, small, okay. Yeah, I mean, we're not, we don't need to run a bunch of heat into this. Again, you know, our, our area of concentration is right on the edge of the flame, the very tip of the flame. So we don't need, we don't need anything big. You know, this is a number two, and I would think that way too big. Okay. So now, do you do you run a neutral flame? Neutral flame. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of fun to do. All right. Uh, I challenged a student a long time ago when I first started teaching here. I, I challenged him to do this. I know I have some. Sorry, I know I have some smoke coming off of this. Don't mean to, but I don't want to turn my flame down from there. I challenged a student to do this, and real difficult for him for some reason he was just making brass bb's and they'd land on the table and roll away and he was very frustrated for about a week and he continued to stay with it and i went and checked on him one evening and i could tell he was mad at me because he didn't even want to he didn't even want to speak to me and i came back a little bit later and asked him how everything was going and he had a a cabin, a tree, a rock wall, and a swing set made. Now how he took a piece of 332nd filler wire and got this thing down into the thickness of a piano wire, I don't know. I even asked him, I said, how did you do that? And he said, I'm not gonna tell you. You know, here's another challenge here. I'm, I've got all these branches here and I need to I need to fix this one here that's coming off here. I can't I can't just stick my torch in here. I've got to manipulate the edge of my flame. Barely melting the tip of this. I say I am. There we go. Okay, so I, I noticed that your, your brass has a flux coating on it. Uh -huh. is, is that what you prefer? 
That's what I prefer for doing this exercise. Uh, there's a lot of things that we repair that we'll use a, a bare brass in a separate flux, like a Peterson's or, or uh, maybe even, depend, it depends on what we're repairing. There's some cast iron that good old 20 mule team borax works pretty good. So you can kind of tell how we're stretching this out right here at the very end. This takes some time, but again, you know, let's, let's do one right out here and I'll go horizontal. I want to melt the very tip of this, fuse those, and then move my torch away. And in doing so, I can actually stretch this brass out just by using the very edge of the flame. Wyatt, have you ever sat down to make a TIG weld and you just weren't in the right mood? Let it. You just weren't in the right mood. You're a little nervous about something. Yeah, usually a of, it's a lot of distractions. It's usually right around tax season. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, kind of got to be in the right mood for this. This is not something you're gonna force happen. You gotta, you gotta relax and manipulate things here. Okay, so I came off of here. I came out, went down, came back up. That looks great. Well, it's kind of fun to do, and you know, when you get done uh, a good test, you can you can drop it if everything's fused together. Okay. It'll stay so together. It's pretty robust. Um, well, this tends to have this clear glass on it. We take a pair of pliers and knock it off. We put it in our blast cabinet and bead blast it and clear coat it. We need to come in and repaint this and make it. I just I just think it's a good exercise. Okay, well let me let me recap it. You're using oxygen and acetylene, mm -hmm. and you're you're taking this to a, a double lot tip, neutral flame, and then the rest of it's your creative heat and dab and and whatever it takes to make this thing yeah. work. Yeah. This this is a flux coated brass, mm -hmm. and do you know what the melting temperature of it is just by chance? Mm -hmm. Thousand degrees. I, I, I can imagine, it, and because you're moving in and out different distances, it, it's melting and re-solidifying, and you're, you're doing all kinds of cool things with it. But uh, one of the, one, you know, I think we're one of the few schools, and, and I had this question asked to me recently on a, on a national committee, was nobody teaches oxyacetylene anymore. Nobody teaches oxyacetylene welding. We do. I've, I've never taken that class off the book simply because it goes hand in hand with TIG welding. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're doing oxyacetylene welds where we're melting the, the parent metal of carbon steel. Uh, we do brazing and silver soldering. Silver soldering to me is amazing in that uh, 70,000 pounds tensile strength. 70,000 pounds off something that melts about eight, 900 degrees. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, very expensive. So did, did, did you tell me you still do have the gas welding in your curriculum? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and do the students, now I'm not saying this happened to me, but do students still get the puddle going and then pop and the guy next to them is a little oh, bit concerned? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that... <laughs> yeah, I we're still going to have a little backflash, a little I, backfire. I, I learned to gas weld first and foremost. And, of course, I went through that. And after a while, you get used to it. But gas welding absolutely gave me the segue into TIG welding. So uh, I'm, I'm glad you've kept it in the curriculum. Sure. It's good stuff. I, I, I think it's very valuable. You know, we, we make repairs on obscure things. Uh, people bring in something irreplaceable. And one of the only ways to fix it is with brazing or with oxyacetylene welding or something. Uh, case in point, we have we have beveling machines that we bevel our pipe with. They're cast aluminum. 
the handle is cast aluminum and it's on a pretty heavy spring to, to grab onto the pipe. And somebody flipped it loose one day and just let it fly open and it broke the, broke the handle. Well, what's the first thing you wanna to try to repair aluminum with? TIG welding. TIG welding, yeah, sure. And you think, of course. you know, that'll work. It didn't work. I, you know, aluminum, cast aluminum is alloyed with a bunch of different stuff, and some of it just absolutely doesn't want to be welded on, yeah. period. And so you, you get everything cleaned up, and you get it set, and you strike an arc, and it just, and you're going, wow, what is that? That's not going to work. And so what are your options? And we exhausted that one day, and, and the last thing we picked up was, was brass. And this thing is just, it just like it just flew right into it and it's going, wow, that, wow. that was cool. And it's still in service today. Mm. That was like 17 years ago and it's still in service today. Good. It was the repair, it was strong, it's durable. Uh, and it's the only way that that material wanted to be stuck together, so. Mm. Well, Bob, thank you so much for showing this to us and thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.